check it out. The world won't understand you. Hey, but it's okay. Say the world won't understand you. Cause I made you in my own way. Say the world won't understand you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 98 of In a Good Way podcast. Today's special guest is Karen Dorothy. She is a psychic medium. She also serves as a mentor and a bridge between the visible and invisible world. She uses her abilities to bring comfort, understanding, and healing uh, for those in need. So thank you so much, Karen, for being here. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks so much. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. Um. So I always like to start with my guests in the beginning, you know, as a child, were you already experiencing your psychic gifts? Um, at what age did that happen? Yeah, I think it's a it's a question that I, I get asked all the time. And it's hard to decipher sometimes for me because it has always felt quite natural. And it's not that I was seeing spirit people all the time, you know, 24 seven, it didn't work like that. It was more sporadic, you know, it would just be where I would suddenly see someone standing in the other room, or I would feel someone or hear someone speak to me. Mm. So it was kind of all different experiences from around the age of three or four. Um, but I do recall, even as young as four years old, you know, seeing people that I knew weren't of this world. And I wasn't frightened. I didn't feel like it was anything to be worried about. Uh, I just always kind of had a knowledge that, oh, well, that's OK. Those are from the other place. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of had that naturally. Absolutely. And were your parents aware that this was going on with you? They were aware of something. My mother in particular, I, I remember like saying certain things to her, like, you know, I, I remember passing a, a cemetery one day and saying to her, why are all those people there? And she looked and said, there's no one there. And there was little instances like that, but she didn't really know what it was um, mm. as such. My grandmother, my paternal grandmother, she seemed to know. She was very, you know, on the ball with it. She would just say to me, oh, you don't worry about those people, they won't harm you. And I later learned in life that she too was mediumistic. Um, she oh. didn't use it, but she was me mediumistic. Wow. So did she nurture you in a way with your gifts or? She made it normal. She made it natural. She made it so that I wasn't frightened or that it was almost just an understanding that that's okay. Whereas I think other adults, but and my mum and dad also, because they didn't really know what it was, they used to, you know, say it was an imaginary friend or, you know, just kind of, or, or say I was oversensitive a lot of the time because I would sen you sense things a lot. Um, so they didn't really know kind of where to put it or what to call it, but my grandmother seemed to know. Mm. So you said in her life, she didn't really use, she didn't use her psychic gifts. She, she didn't take on that career or mission in life. Not in a career way or a mission, but she did always have wisdom to share. She did. She used to read tea leaves. I, I remember, you oh. know, watching her in her kitchen, um, reading tea leaves for people that would come to the house. Um, but she didn't make a big deal of it. But I think that that was because more back then it wasn't something that was spoken about people knew about it but it's not as prevalent as it is today so I think it was more the point that she knew and she could see things and feel things but she didn't really go out and use it in any way mm. so for you at, at what age throughout your whole childhood you were aware of your gifts or did you suppress it at some point I think I was always aware. I didn't suppress it as such. I did kind of go with the flow on it, even maybe at school where I would, you know, see someone's grandmother standing beside them or tell them something that I shouldn't know. Um, so that was always there. But I think later in life, when it became very intense, around about 19, 20 years old, it really was quite intense where I would hear lots of spirit people speaking all at once. And it got to a point where I didn't want that because I didn't know what to do with that. And it it, it just felt quite um, overwhelming. 
So at that point, I did ask Spirit to stop because I was thinking, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But I went and spoke to a medium about it because I'd always followed mediumship since I was like 10 or 11 years old. Oh, wow. And I, yeah, I went to a local church, spiritualist church. And um, so I watched mediums work and I went and spoke to the medium there and she said, but you have to develop that. And I said, I don't know. What do you mean? I, don't, I didn't know that I was a medium. And she said, yes, you are. You have to go and develop that and learn how to use it. So that's what I done. I embarked upon my development journey. And from the minute I done that, it was like everything made sense. Mm. And so that's it. So by you, there was a church that blended the two, the mediumship and the church. Well, we have in the UK, we have quite a lot of spiritualist uh, churches and wow. centers. Um, There are quite a few. I mean, there's probably more in England than in Scotland but we do have a lot more than I would say other places overseas um so it it's if you want to go if you're into that and you understand it and you want to believe in that then it's a it's a nice um place to start um but I also watched mediums on tv um John Edwards oh. media I, I loved John Edwards um just other mediums that I could follow and watch their work I was really inspired by that too oh wow so at what age did you finally embrace it and say, okay, I'm going to start learning more and being mentored more? Probably around 23, 24, around about that age, um, where, you know, I had, I had two young children by then and I, it just felt like the right time to go and see, you know, speak to the medium about it, sit in development. And as soon as I done that, um, it was like the light switched on. It was almost just that feeling of being home. That's the only way I could describe it. And then really quite quickly, it, it wasn't like I had to sit for months or years on end before I understood what was taking place. I really felt very quickly that I was able to communicate. I was able to feel them. It was just like they were waiting for me to make that step. Uh, and then from then on, I've really worked full time with my mediumship. Wow. So you've been working as a medium since your early 20s, basically. Yeah. Yeah. All the way through. And it, it took off really quickly as well. It wasn't a, an intentional thing because even at that point, I was feeling like, OK, I can do that, you know, and then I would start to do a few readings for people. And then word would get around that people were having these readings. And before I knew it, the my diary was busy and then I was getting asked to do um, churches, centers. And then I started to do my own audience events as well. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I didn't want to jump too far ahead, but I do have a question that really stood out to me when I was um reading about you. Um, so for example, you say how people on the other side need just as much help as people on this side. I don't know if that's too far ahead because I still want to know, like, um, well, let's let's go back a little. What are some things that really stand out to you that made you want to keep doing it? Once you started doing it, what made you say, you know what? I see that that this really is my purpose. And what made you really want to continue? Well, the, the overwhelming thing for me was the feeling of it, like really honestly feeling like finally I was who I was supposed to be. That mm. is, it, it sounds quite dramatic, but when you when you are spiritual or you are mediumistic, you live your life almost feeling like you're not quite yourself, but you don't know why you're not yourself. So mm. once I stepped into that power of me, I was able to then feel like that. So that kind of inspired me to keep going because it felt true and it felt authentic but over and above that feeling when I seen the healing that it brought to people and the help that it gave them and the the way that you could actually um, change you know someone's perspective just by sharing mm. that knowledge um, that is what inspires me every single day to do what I do and you know don't get me wrong you know human life comes into it the physical comes into it so I have the physical life the same as everyone else and at times you could feel like you need to build energy to do this work mm. but what inspires me to keep going is the fact that I know it's my purpose and I want to help other people absolutely and you've been doing it for 25 years right or yes wow yes that's amazing, that's amazing. so okay let's go to that that now because um that's fascinating to me that 
you know, so on the other side, sometimes they're stuck and they need the healing as well. So if you could give a little insight into that or how you were shown that, that, that on the other side, even, you know, our departed loved ones or family members, they need to heal as well. Well, it's not that they're stuck. It's that when, if you can imagine, um, let's say someone passes away quickly or unexpectedly, and you can imagine, you know, when that happens to that person, they then cross over into spirit. They are still they know where they are because we all know where we are when we cross over, but they are still grieving for that life that they've left behind. So they will still be in that place of emotion of missing their person, maybe not saying goodbye to their children or just feeling like all of a sudden they changed, they had, their life changed. So they will be in that emotional place where they need healing. And even if it's someone that's, you know, been ill for a long time and crosses over, there is always going to be that connection to our loved ones back back here. Mm. So in that essence, then it stands to reason to me that when I'm doing a, a, a reading for someone, let's say their father comes through from the spirit side, I can feel that that father needed to convey that he was still there, needed to convey his feelings, his emotions, or whatever it is that he might be bringing forward in order to heal the, the son or the daughter, but also it, give, it gives him that feeling of being lighter because he's been able to share that message. So that's where I say the healing always takes place on both sides. Oh, wow. So for yourself, you've had relatives as well that passed over? Yes, my I have obviously um grandparents that have passed over, but also um my and aunties, but I also my own mother um passed away eight years ago. Oh wow. So in that case, she came directly to you, or when someone for you crosses over, do you kind of need to get someone else to help you? Well, it's really strange because, again, I, I get asked that quite a lot. But the, the one thing is, you know, as a medium, I don't have any kind of special access to speak to my people any more than anyone else, even oh. though I'm mediumistic. But the one thing that I do have and I'm very lucky to have is just that complete knowledge that my mum is there and that she can hear me and that she is around us. Um, I have had her come to me, but it's maybe twice or three times in the last eight years oh, wow. um, but I do sense her even though she's maybe not in communication all the time uh, and when she was crossing over um, the one thing about being a medium as well is that you can connect psychically to the soul of the person whilst they are still here and when she was crossing over um, I sat with her and I could feel that it was time and I could feel that she needed to move forward so that she could step into spirit and I was able to help her with that by just reassuring her that I'm okay, you know, the family are okay. Just make the, I kept saying to her, make the jump, just be brave, just make the jump. You, you're not leaving anything behind because my mum was quite fearful before she passed. Um, oh, wow. She was, yeah, she was quite fearful of it. So I kept trying to reassure her, mum, you'll be all right, make the jump. And when she did pass, um, I could feel her fill the room, absolutely fill the room. Uh, and how ecstatic she was that she had actually done it and she was still here in spirit um so for me that gave me huge um relief uh, of course and I was able to then pass that to my sisters and to my children and, and it kind of gave them that too wow so is there is there let me lower this real quick um so is there any anyone that or any any times that you that really stand out to you? Any experiences where you've helped somebody that that really just stuck with you, that were really impactful to you? I mean, there's so many of them over the years. Um, I, I think one that stands out to me was when I was reading for a lady who had lost her her child. Uh, he was ten years old when he passed away, and as I was giving her the information and giving the evidence, she was understanding it all. She was saying yes, and she was taking things that I was bringing forward. But I felt like it didn't touch her soul. I was feeling a little bit like 
there's something else that she's looking for and I couldn't quite put my finger on it but I persevered with it and as it came to the end because it was in an audience reading so I didn't have I only had like six or seven minutes with her but as it came to the end of the the time I, I said to the little boy in spirit please tell me your name now it's not something I would normally do because if a medium looks for information the medium's mind can come into it oh, and okay. start throwing up lots of different things so usually I just allow it to flow through my mediumship but in this in this circumstance I just felt like the mum needed that and as soon as I asked the little boy his name he gave me his name and I was able to then go to the mother and say this is his name and it was and she in that moment broke down and she said to me afterwards I, I needed that I knew what you were saying was correct but I just needed to know it was him um, and it really changed what she felt about believing that her son was there and it wasn't about me it wasn't about me getting the name right or anything like that it was more about the power of the spirit I asked that little boy your mum really needs this and immediately he gave me the name immediately just opened and, and it was there and the power of the spirit is quite magnificent in what it can do. And that really stood out to me and stayed with me for a long time. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. You just gave me a lot of insight as well. Um, and I, I, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, has there been any that I guess stuck with you for other reasons that were a little more maybe hurtful or just heavy, I guess would be the the better word where maybe someone that didn't want to transition over on on the other side or or something or someone on this side wasn't ready to release or or things like that what happens when you come across those kind of energies you can feel um at times you know that the emotion about the passing is very heavy on both sides mm. but particularly in the spirit side of things you definitely can feel you know if someone really is in deep grief about the fact that they've crossed over or they've left their loved ones behind um there isn't a lot from the human side of things that you can do for th that spirit the, mm. the spirit world will help them deal with that but there are other times where i have done readings where the energy has been really quite heavy because of maybe trauma meaning um you know the way that someone's passed for instance mm. Or like I, I remember doing a reading a long time ago and, and someone was murdered. And so when they came through to give me this information, I could see everything. They showed me everything in detail um, and it felt heavy and it wasn't, a, a, you know, from a medium's perspective or from Karen's perspective, it wasn't easy to detach from those images and, and things like that. So that can stay with you for a little while. But the other thing I was going to share was let's say someone doesn't have a good relationship with someone in life or it, there's been an abusive past of some sort, um, the spirit person will usually come forward and address that. But sometimes the person here is not ready to hear that. So mm. I've had someone in where I've said, oh, I've got your dad here. And as soon as I know that the father has stepped in or the mother, whoever it is, I, as soon as I know that person stepped in, I know that there's been that element to it. And I always say now, I know that you might not want them to come in and that's okay. This is your choice. It's your reading, but I have to let you know that they are here. And sometimes it can bring peace. Sometimes it can bring communication to a situation where it brings peace. And other times the person will say, no, I really don't want to talk to them. And in that instance, I would say to the spirit person, I'm so sorry, I can't bring your communication forward. But they already know that. But the reason that they will step forward is just to start introducing the idea that they have had their life review, that they know what was done in the lifetime and they're trying to bring some sort of healing towards mm. that person. So all uh -huh. of that's quite a, you know, it feels like a quite a heavy energy when you're working in that kind of, of thing. Absolutely. Um. So let me share with you like some some things. Um. For example, when I was when I was young, there was a little girl that was in my house, right? And I would see her, and uh, you know, my dad saw her as well. And it's funny because my dad has always been the biggest skeptic. He doesn't believe in anything, right? Even though he's he's seen things, right? And so, um. We would see this little girl and once even a man was building the patio, you know, like he was building a patio outside doing some like 
construction work. And he even saw her, the little girl. And my my dad said, oh, don't tell him because he's going to get scared and not finish the work, you know? So anyways, um, one day, you know, at that time, I was listening to like, like the Christian preachers, right? And someone said something about driving spirits and this little ritual. So I did it. And after that, I never saw her again. And I even saw this other spirit that it looked like I had never seen before. But after I did that, they were outside the house like they couldn't come back in. And I felt bad because it was like, like they weren't doing, I don't know what made, I just, I guess I saw it on TV and it was like the little ritual on driving yeah. the spirits out. So I did it. And then after that, the little girl, I never seen her again. And then even this boy, he kind of was looking at me like, why, what did I do? Why did you kick me out? So in that case, why were they still stuck here? Why were these spirits still on on this plane? What 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 makes them not be able to go, I guess? Well, they can go. They can go. They can also visit. You know, the, the, we have that kind of free will in the spirit side as well. So it's not that they're stuck here or that they haven't moved on. It's just that they can come in visitation. And usually... Um, they will be attracted to other children because children are, are quite insightful and, and children sometimes can see spirit very easily compared to adults who have got a million other things in their head. Um, mm. So sometimes spirit children can be attracted to that, come and play with them, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it's not that you drove them out. It's not that you were able to keep them away. It's more about the spirit being very respectful of our um. wishes. So, you know, like if someone comes to me, there's times where, you know, I'm in bed at night or I'm just, you know, I'm not working and I can feel spirit come in. And if I'm, let's say it's in the middle of the night, if I'm going to bed or in bed, I will say, no, not just now, you know, I'm I'm sleeping and they respect that. And it, it, it's like that for anyone. And I get asked the question a lot. You know, I have people that say, I seen someone, like I seen my mother and I was frightened. So I told her to go away and never do that to me again because I was scared. And now I'm worried that she'll never come and visit me. And I always say she will come and visit you, but she will do it in a different way. The spirit world never mean to frighten us. Mm. It's just that they want to be around. They want us to know that they are there. So there's no spirits, in my opinion, that are stuck on the earth plane. It just wouldn't make sense to me that, you know, you do hear about rescue circles, rescue mediumship, where the mediums will sit and tell the spirit person to go into the light and move them on. For me, that doesn't quite make sense because for mm. me, the spirit guides would be doing that. You know, they would be helping on the other side. It's not a human, it's not up to a human being to help a spirit move forward. Um, so there's no one stuck, but there are some spirits who like to stay in visitation mm. to where they're connected. Wow. Um, so just just a little bit. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much. Um because I have those gifts as well, right? But mm -hmm. to me, it always came in dreams until last year was the first time that I ever started. Because, you know, I guess I had the influence from the church also, right? Like you have those things of like, oh, as long as I'm not doing it, then no one could say, oh, it's of the devil or this or that, right? Because, hey, it came to me naturally. Things always came to me in dreams. Sometimes I would just know. I never asked. Until last, after last year, I was like, oh, like, you know, someone did a test. They were like, hey, okay, try it. And then they were like, yeah, everything you said was right. So I was like, oh, wow. I didn't know I could just ask for it on demand. But so sometimes it's like, like the other day, right? I did an interview and I saw something before the interview. But see, I thought it was someone coming through or something, right? I seen, mm -hmm. and it was weird. I was like, I don't even want to say it because it was weird. It was like, I saw this woman on like the stripper pole, you know, the stripper poles yeah, like that, like dancing, like an exotic dancer. And I asked them, they were like, oh no. I was like, okay, I don't know. Uh, so a couple hours after the interview, someone emailed me that want to do an interview. And on their page, they have it, them on the stripper pole as like exercise for exercise, you know, like that. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. So how did you learn to decipher? See, so that would be more like seeing a premonition or something. I don't know what that was. Yeah. But at first I thought, oh, it's someone coming through for the per this person, right? So how how did you learn to decipher 
um those kind of things difference yeah so that's a psychic vision so that is you already psychically picking up on who you're going to be speaking with so you're picking up you're being shown a vision or you're picking up on a vision of that person and something to do with them so the difference between psychic feelings and mediumistic feelings of someone coming through the communication mediumistically feels very um alive it feels you know it feels moving it feels like it's a flow of, of communication with a psychic like that vision that you've seen is more static it's something that you pick up it can be a visualization it can be a feeling on something but it doesn't feel like it's communicating mm. so you, you do learn to through development and it does take development you don't have to learn how to be a medium if you're a medium no one can teach you to be a medium but you do have to learn the tools the differences how to discern the differences with the psychic and the mediumship um so that can take time but you do you do get used to how you work within your own mediumship as well. Like if you done development now, you would get used to the fact that, oh yeah, I know that's psychic because I know how that feels. Or you would say, this is definitely someone coming through because that feels different. So it's more about just developing those skills. Wow. No, no, thank you. Like that really helped. <laughs> um, so even as when it's a medium thing, you do hear it, right? Like a lot of times you'll hear... You can hear, see, feel, uh, you know, you hear about people talking about clairvoyance, clear audience, clear sentience. So that's hearing, seeing and feeling. Then there's clear cognizance, which is just a knowing about something. Uh, and spirit communicate all different ways. I can have someone communicating with all of those senses, or I might have someone who comes through that can only show me things, a vision, you know, or, or showing me through their own eyes what they've seen when they were here. Um, but every spirit person that comes in will communicate the way that they can get the message message to me the quickest mm. no and going back to something you had said uh see one day some someone was coming through for someone but i seen them they looked very like sickly right the word is gone but then they they went like that like almost like to choke me and i was like what is that about and i felt it was for someone and i messaged them but i think it was I don't know if that person was trying to apologize and they were trying to tell me that in this life they had abused the person that they wanted to connect with. And so they had to show me very vividly like that, you know, so I don't know. I know maybe a normal person would have been scared like, oh, whoa, what was that? Like this, like, was this like some kind of evil spirit? I didn't take it. Like, I just took it like, OK, they were trying to really show me something like that. I don't know if that's how they died. They looked very sickly, but they were trying to choke me. And I felt like the message was for someone like almost like they wanted to make amends with the person that on this side they had they had been abusive towards. But when I asked that person, hey, did you know any anything like this? And then they just ignored me. So I felt like, OK, maybe they don't want to hear it or something like that. Yeah, you sometimes have to be, I think when you're first developing or that you are naturally mediumistic and you're getting messages like that. It's difficult because you want to pass that on so that it's verified and, and so that the person gets the message, right? But sometimes it's better to not do that because I was all I always felt like I can't pass a message on to someone unless that person has asked me to do that for them. And sometimes with the spirit world, it's not that they want you to go and pass that message on. It can just be that they can see that you can do it. So I always say to my students, if your light's on, they're coming in, right? So uh -huh. that's what I use it all the time. If your light's on, they're going to come in. And it doesn't mean that you can put, then pass it on because you see, you know, on TV and things like that, you see all oh, this medium walked into a shop and she was able to tell the, the woman, you know, behind the counter that this was her mother and all this. And I don't agree with that. I think that that's, you know, mediumship is sacred, it's something that should be passed on uh, at the discretion of the medium and the person that's included in that because it can be very damaging as well because you don't know what that person's belief system is. That person might not believe in spirit or it might be that the person that's trying to reach them was abusive and then how do they cope with that if they, they're not in a place in their life to cope with that communication? So there has to you have to know that side of it as well. So I would never pass on a message 
uh, unless I knew the person had asked for it or that they would be okay with it. But when it's starting to happen like it did to you, I feel probably that that spirit person did reach out to you, but it was maybe just so that you could hone in on your mediumistic skill. And it's maybe through development, you would know what to do with that when it came through. Um. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't want to make it too much about, um. oh, let's talk about the spirit team and the guides, right? Because even that, like, I haven't really, you know, I've had a few people that see it said that they saw a guide for me that I've seen, right? I saw them like one day I was just sitting on my bed and I seen them, but it was almost like in my mind, but I could see it, right? Like a movie. And I seen this guide and someone else has told me that they saw this guide for me, right? And I was like, oh yeah, that's the one I saw. Mm -hmm. So how do you connect? Because that I've that's the only one I've really seen. And how many guides do we have? How do we connect with them? And also, if you don't mind, if you see any of my guides right now as well. So go ahead. Sorry, I want to yeah. interrupt. You know, no, that's okay. I was going to say, you know, we all have a spirit team. We all have many guides and many helpers. And you will always have your main guide, if you like, that's been with you from the time you've come here. Um, and And so you will have a main one. But the other ones will come intermittently at different times. So it's like being at school. You know, if you're in year one at school, then you know you're going to get a year one teacher if you're in year five you're going to get a year five teacher and it just mm. all de is dependent on your level of what you're learning at that point and your own evolving at that point um and different teachers will do different things different guides will do different things uh, different aspects of your life so there is never one set guide mm. that you you need to make that connection with the one thing that, again, I tell my students and for myself and my own experience is there is no rush to meet your guides. Your guides will introduce themselves as and when. If you are actively meditating, if you are actively developing yourself, then your guides will undoubtedly come in at some point to let you know that they are there and they will give you the information accordingly to who they are. I don't really tell people who their guides are not because I might not pick up on it but there's no evidence in it I can sit here today and say to you oh I know that this person's your guide or this is what they've done but you don't have evidence of that so then it's like I'm telling you something that you either believe or you don't believe but what that can do is it can then put that into your mind so then your mind will project that. So then how do you ever know if that's an authentic connection? So what my recommendation would always be is meeting your guides is a very personal thing. Mm. And so I would sit and recommend to people sit and ask your guides to step forward. Sometimes I like to um, tell my students in meditation to visualize a sacred place for them. So it could be a room, it could be the beach, it could be a cabin it could be anywhere that they feel comfortable visualize that that space and hold that space purely for your guides and helpers and when you meditate and go to that place you can then ask your guides and helpers to step forward and allow them to introduce themselves that way um, I just find it's more authentic for the person to get their own connection to their guide no, absolutely. And thank you so much for saying that because I've never heard anyone put it the way you did of how, like having different teachers, like, yeah, you wouldn't have the same teacher in first grade that you would in fifth grade or things like that. So I've yeah. never heard anyone explain it like that. And that made perfect sense. So, so thank you so much for saying that. Um, How do you protect yourself from negative energies? My way all the way through has been never to be worried about it in any way. It, you know, obviously we have, you know, good and bad and everything that's done. Um, But I, I think if you work in the light, you stay in the light. You know, I've always, when I say my prayer when I work with spirit, I'll always say for the highest of good, let me work for the highest of good at all times. And it's just a presumption, really. It's just a it's just an attitude that I have about working in the light. So I've never really felt that I need to worry about a dark side to things or worry that I would be affected because I just trust my guides and helpers that I'm protected, that that is what I do. I'm protected. That doesn't mean I don't understand that there are powerful energies, um, but it's not in my mind 
through my mediumship, it's not something that's affected me in that way. Um, I have I have felt a couple of times over the years, uh, heavy energy or maybe an energy that I have felt mm, that's a bit too powerful and I didn't feel good about it mm. uh, when I've been working, but not that it's been able to stay with me. I don't believe in attachments. It's I know people talk about attachments. You know, a negative spirit can attach themselves to you. I think that's actually putting fear out there for people um if you work in the light and, and you stay in the light and your intention is in the light then you will stay there that is my my feeling on it okay but so in, in your walk you've never because maybe that made me even more hesitant because when i was young i would see like what i mean they're, they're not even scary it's what people for lack of a better word might consider like demons and this and that right and I would see them on people. And sure enough, there was always something that person, whether it was drug use or something, there was always something heavy. And so I would see these things, right? Uh, and I would think I wanted to help these people. But what I was shown was that it's like that. If someone keeps inviting something in, there's nothing you can do. So that's kind of what that's I was it. shown. Yeah. That's true. And the thing is, if you see, you've got to remember also your mind will portray the feeling of something. So if you look at someone and you know they're fighting their own demons, let's call it, you know, they've got their own things going on where it's a heavy energy or it's not good. Um, you automatically as a medium will pick up on the energy of that. And then your mind tries to make sense of what is this I'm picking up? What is this I'm feeling? And so your mind will project almost like an image of what that feeling looks like if that makes sense so then of course it can look like demons of course it can do that um but like you've just said more than you know nine times out of ten it's going to be more about how the person is living their life or what is inside of them what they're battling with inwardly that you're picking up on um I think by sometimes I've heard people saying, you know, well, it's a bad spirit or it's a demon or it's this or that. And I think, but that's really taken away our own responsibility for who we are because we are in charge of our spirit. You know, there's nobody can attach themselves to me unless I am taking that energy on and allowing that to penetrate into my energy fields. And I'm not going to do that because I work for the highest of good. So that's not going to happen. So it's it's about staying in control of, of that aspect. But if you see someone that is struggling like that, or you see that someone's energy is not good, or there's something not good, then you can acknowledge that and certainly say, you're sending love to that person. You know, you hope that they find their way out of that. But it's not that the a bad spirit has attached themselves there mm. so you feel that you're being shown that more figuratively than like saying this is what's on the end because i mean it's funny that you said that because in one of the visions i had when i was young it was like that's exactly it looked like because it reminded me of a passage from the bible and it was almost like we were inside this person and these huge demon things that were there. So it was like that. Like if inside we were fighting for this person, but I was being shown that they kept inviting it back in, whatever the thing was. And it was, yeah, I guess it was that strong that there was nothing. And there was, there was nothing I could do Mm -hmm. like ever for this person because they kept inviting this thing back in. So that's it. You can, you can give, um, energy to people and you can you know as a medium all the time I want to give energy to people and help them understand their own power and what they are capable of in their own power uh, but I can't do it for them you know it's it's got to be that individually we each have our own power and we can share that with people but we can't change what they choose or what they invite in for themselves absolutely um let me ask you about like when you feel the energy sometimes, right? If you're reading for somebody, because since we started this interview, for some reason, I keep feeling like this little pain right here, like, like that I didn't have before. So I don't know, like, for example, when things like that, is it someone trying to communicate something? Because I keep getting this little pain, like here on my left, and I don't feel it like from me, see, in, in that instance. So when you feel little things like that, is that communication or? 
It could be. It absolutely could be. They can affect you uh, in a physical way. But, well, what feels like physical. It's not that they're doing anything physical, but it can feel that way. Um, when I'm communicating with someone who's, let's say, passed with a heart attack, sometimes it feels like I'm having the heart attack. Um, but I know it's the spirit putting that on me um, mm. to show me, to demonstrate to me something and bring evidence. So when we are connected to spirit, yes, we can definitely pick up on things like that. They can affect you in a physical way as well. Oh, wow. OK. And then um, let me ask you this question as well. So, for example, like how how you said about the psychic visions. Um, so how do you feel about that? Or have you been shown that things already exist? Because how do we pick up on psychic things unless they're already existing somewhere, right? Like they had to have already happened somewhere for the, for us to be able to see that, right? Or how do you feel about it? So do you mean as in premonitions or do you mean when you're working with someone psychically for you picking things up about their life? I guess we could touch on both, but let's start with the premonitions first. When you see premonitions of the future. Yeah. Yeah. Do they already this exist or... Well, they can, they can do, but at the same time, you have to remember that the soul knows more than the human brain. Mm. So what I mean by that is if so, it's like people that talk about deja vu, you know, like they'll say, oh, I've done that before. The, they haven't done it before, but what's happened is the soul has recognized it and that's transpired into the human brain. And so the human brain feel that's familiar then, but actually it's, it's just happened. So premonitions wise you can definitely pick up a feeling of something that's going to happen or a vision of something that's going to happen and I do believe there are things that are on your path that will happen you know like things that are kind of a little bit predestined to happen at certain points but we do have free will to move around our path and you know so it might not happen exactly when that person thinks it might happen um, so that is a premonition side of things. And for the psychic side of things, yeah, when you're communicating with some someone psychically or linking in psychically, you're picking up on the things that have happened usually. And you can then connect. So if I was connecting to you and I was working in a psychic way, I can pick up things out about your past, things about your present and things about that are coming up for you or, or the potential for things. So I don't call it a prediction. I call it a potential because you still have choices. You still have free will. Um, mm -hmm. So if I do a reading for someone, I can pick up, you know, I can maybe say, oh, and you were thinking about going and doing a new area of study. And I feel like that's there for you in two years time. Well, whether that person does that or not, I have no control over, but I know that it's there for them should they want it. So it comes up in that way. Wow. You know, and I never really, I guess I never really looked into the difference between, because you always hear the two words together, psychic medium. So I always put it together. And now you, you help me understand what a psychic is like seeing in like in, basically someone, right? Yes. Yeah, psychic is of the soul here incarnate which is the soul of the person in the physical. So I can psychically pick up on anyone in this world and what's gone on in their life here presently, past, present and future to a degree. But the soul that's discarnate, which is the mediumship side of things, they're the ones who have already crossed over and don't have a physical body, then that's mediumship. That's when you use your mediumship to connect with them. Oh, wow. Okay, that makes perfect sense. You need to be, you do need to be um, psychic to be a medium, but you oh. don't have to be a medium to be psychic because oh. we are all psychic. When we come here from the spirit side, because we come here from there, we live our lives here and then we go home to the spirit side. But whilst we are here in this life, we still have our own psychic ability, which we will call sixth sense in, you know, um, intuition some people say they've got a hunch about something you know that's your that's your psychic ability that you brought here with you but it's usually at quite a low level or a level just to keep you right I call it your inner sat nav in life mm. keeps you on the right path if you listen to it um and that's the part of everyone that's psychic but not everyone's a medium mm. that makes sense and have you ever like for example before when I used to have the dream sometimes I would get confused because I would have dreams like 
let's say I had a dream about you and I'm seeing it like if I'm you. Um, like for example, I had a dream once like of a friend, but in the dream it's like they were me and I was them. And in real life, what was happening to me had happened to them. And I, like one day, like I think two months later, they were telling me, oh, I was going through this. And I was like, wait a second. I had that dream, but in the dream, I was, everything you're saying you're, went, you're going through, I was going through in the dream. So when things like that, it gets confusing, right? It gets confusing because I don't, I don't understand yeah. how anything like that it, happened with you. Yeah, it's confusing. Dreams speak to you a lot, actually. And you have to remember that when we go to sleep at night, um, our soul doesn't sleep. Our body sleeps. Our brain kind of regenerates. It, it updates. It's like a computer. So in that, then, you, if you are then with someone else or psychically linked to someone else those messages can kind of cross over or you could be picking things up for someone through your dream state uh, which is what obviously happened with you you were psychically linked soul to soul and your brain was updating it as the computer was updating and yeah. um, so it was remembered that way so dreams can be confusing but they can sometimes give really good signs and really good evidence of things that are happening and again just maybe more proof that you know the soul is its own thing and has that power even when you are sleeping absolutely absolutely and the same it's even happened in a in a dream of the past right where I ended up it was almost like a stranger it was someone I knew but just barely and I ended up working with someone and I don't even know why I told them I remember telling them hey I had the craziest dream yesterday and I told them this whole story of this dream and they just look at me and they're like you just said word for word what happened to me three years ago and I was like what so that was one of the first times that I saw oh wow I see like the past of someone as well too, not just, but see, and and that in that dream too, it was happening to me. So I saw it like I, I was them, but it was happening to me, right? So I don't know. It was just uh, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, but yeah. Then it sounds, you know, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience of all of these things. So it's maybe about a development um side for you. Yeah, you know, I think maybe to like since it's always came naturally naturally i think i was i'm having a little bit of a ah well they want to give it to me they'll give it to me but now even hearing some of your story i almost feel like maybe i should take that leap into mentorship right like into really um you know i mean what could it hurt right like regardless i mentorship's a great thing i when i first started i didn't have anyone to be a mentor. I, I I went to classes. I went to the Arthur Finlay College, which is the big spiritualist college in the UK. Everyone travels from all over the world there. Oh, wow. Um and I you, just to see different teachers, to listen to different lectures. Um, because I was trying to find my way into what is this, you know, what do I do with this? Even though it felt natural, I still felt like I need I was thirsty for that knowledge uh, and understanding. Um, and I remember feeling at the time, you know, I wish there was someone to mentor me, you know, one to one. And mm. so I always kind of made it a, a thing for me that when I feel ready and at the stage of teaching, I would do mentorship because I know what it's like. I have walked that path. I have strived to find, you know, the answers to things. So when I work with students in a mentorship level, um, it really can enhance what they already have naturally. But even just sharing the experience and, and talking about it, discussing it and giving them exercises and tools really helps them. And lately, I my son, who is um, 29, he's, uh, he's psychic too, and he uses his gifts in a completely different way than I do. Um, but we have collaborated on a, a mentorship for people just starting out, you know, a psychic mentorship. Uh, I'm, I work with him as well. So he teaches and then I come into the workspace as well and teach. This is all online. Um, and we've found that it's really working. And then after that part of the mentorship, then the student will go on to the advancing mentorship just with me. Uh, so it's just me and them and my son's not involved in that part. Um, but what we found is it provides a really good foundation for people to start exploring where they're at with things. And, and I do believe in mentoring and I do believe it for it to be a one-to-one -one experience as well. 
Yeah, I think that's kind of uh in my head what uh something that I, you know I would have wanted more a one to one. I think maybe because I see a lot of uh where it's more of a class kind of setting or thing like that. And so I'm not sure yeah. if you'll be able to, like, sometimes I ask, like, is it just, oh, someone posts videos online and then that's it? Or, or it, look, here's the class, just look at I, it. Like, you I know, think I, there's a lot like that. I do think there's a lot out there like that. But I think that's why my son and I um, have made sure that it's not like that with ours, because I, that those things are really helpful like classes online are really helpful Inform any information is really helpful but what you want to do is connect with your student and really feel what they need because a mentoring is more about an individual mediumship is very individual so although you can you can put out generic things and although you can help with tools for everyone that would affect everyone you've also then to connect with the student one to one to find out what they actually need they they might not need the same as the next person in the class or the next person in the class so um again lewis my son he has perfected that within the the first part of the mentorship um that him and i work on and then it goes on to the advancing stage so what if someone just wants to jump into the advance <laughs> Do you you can't jump into the advance. No, um, I used to, to be fair, I did used to say, if you're an advanced medium, you can just start at that point. But what I seemed to find with that was when you say that to someone, although they could be perfectly natural mediums and, you know, at a point where they understand mediumship, there's still there's still a need for a foundation, I feel, uh, for a complete understanding of their own power. And I say to my students all the time, the biggest thing that you'll get out of this is your personal development and understanding who you are, first and foremost, your higher power. And then we move on to the advanced stages of things after that. So it is the programme is open to everyone. And if someone was already working as a medium, then I would probably look at that application and say, right, let me look to see um, if you can just come to the advanced stage. But more often than not, I would advise anyone to start, you know, with the psychic side of things first. Oh, okay. No, no, thank you so much. Um, So, um, I mean, I was going to ask you, my next question was going to be like some of the the mentorships you offer and some of the services you offer. But I mean, that's kind of, unless you want to elaborate any more on that or... or No, I, I mean, I think that, you know, anyone who's interested in, in looking at that um, can go to the website, karendoherty.com, and the information is there regarding the, the mentorships. Um, and I think it's a worthwhile thing to do because I, I honestly feel like especially you know now where there's so much social media and there's so much out there um there's so many varied ways of looking information up and some of it is really incorrect and some of it's really correct so i think that it, there is a, a mixture out there so again maybe doing a mentorship program or even gaining knowledge first so i offer the mentorships but on with my son's side of things he offers meditations and and short courses and knowledge and all of that kind of thing um so there'd be links on there for that as well so maybe someone doesn't want to jump into a mentorship as such you know a, a commitment but they might want to kind of dip their toe in the water and see what is this about well that's all all there as well so um everything's at the website that that people need for that okay perfect and then also the link to your readings and, and all those services that you provide as well right Yes, personal consultations are on there, events are on there, you know, Zoom readings, fundraisers, all of that. Um, and, and there's a submission page as well. So if you wanted to submit a form for me to read, you know, for something that you need that's not on there, then that I, I read all of those as well and, and reply to everyone. Okay, perfect. Um, I mean, unless there's anything else you want to add, I think uh I think that's a good place to uh to come to an end yeah. yeah I think so it's been a great discussion and I think you know it, I love doing things like this because I do feel that it gets the knowledge out there and it's important to talk about it and discuss it and you know reach people that maybe didn't know where to start or maybe didn't know about it you know so um thank you once again for for having me on no no the honor is all mine and uh no exactly that's why I started the podcast because 
before as my gifts or whatever were developing more and more I would make videos, right? And sometimes even then I would be afraid of being judged. So I would delete them, post videos, delete them, post videos, delete them, right? Because since I grew up and it was like a road of self-discovery because it was before the internet, right? Having, oh, what's happening to me? Why am I this and that and that and this? Um, trying to go to church and seeing if anyone can help me there. And nope, it's like, you would think in a spiritual setting because the churches yeah. here were not like, I guess over there in the UK where they're more accepting here, it was like, no, like you can't. Well, yeah, our churches are not like the churches here through different religions, only really the, the one that's for spiritualists um, can talk about it. Other oh. other churches don't, you know, it's not the it's not the right thing. It's oh, not I... the same thing. Yes. yes. So here it was like, I think now I've heard of more like spiritualist churches. But before when I was growing up, I had never heard of them. Um, so yeah, so just that I, I eventually, that's why I wanted to be able to talk about these things. And once I started the podcast, I saw that there's already a lot of spiritual podcasts as well. So I didn't know that before. And once I started it, I was like, oh, wow, there's already uh, other spiritual podcasts. So I was, but at that point I had already started. So I'll just keep going with it and see, you know, maybe it'll help people and, and, uh, yeah. you know, so absolutely. So Karen, thank you so much. It's been an honor. Uh, I'll put all the links to, you know, or the link to reach you on your website below. And uh, yeah, no, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Life may move fast, though it may move slow. I met a silly man who said he'd make it slow. We look about towards space, so we went at the sky. One day pass away, but never look inside. Breathe in, breathe out. Life is a man's move, figure this out. Feeling it, you know what I'm saying? You're just feeling it. <laughs> and I want to feel this way forever. Forever.